Hi, Mr. Green. I'm Mr. White. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the way from where? From Texas. From Texas. Yeah. From Texas to Cincinnati, Ohio. In the dead of winter. In the dead of winter. <laughs> <laughs> here looks like another coilover conversion okay here we go Whew. Ooh. I see hey, how you doing, <laughs> all right about yourself good ah huh. very nice Beautiful car. Beautiful. Man. Goodness. I mean, it's like new. Yeah, I see. It really, really is. Okay. It come out of Malibu, California. Oh man, Malibu, California. <laughs> wow. And I bought it from a, a Facebook friend. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know I love black SL55. Oh, <laughs> well, for these type of cars, it's God, that's so beautiful. It's the classic color, mm. in my opinion. Yeah. 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 It's the best color. Well, guys, I have another SL coming into Cincinnati, Ohio. This one all the way from Texas. You see the license plate? Texas, man. Goodness gracious. This owner trusts me to do his coilover conversion to get rid of the ABC and to do the Silver's Neo Max coilover conversion all the way from Texas to Cincinnati, Ohio. Snow all over the place. Dead winter, five degrees. We're bringing in an SL55 AMG, 2008. Beautiful car. I'm so looking forward to this one. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, hey hi. Go ahead well, and say, hi, Mr. Green. I'm Mr. White. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the way from where? From Texas. From Texas. Yeah. From Texas to Cincinnati, Ohio. In the dead of winter. In the dead of winter. <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate you, and I'll definitely take care of your baby here and get it done. And and uh, you're you're going to fly back out, or how you how you going to do it? Are you going to drive back out? Well, I think I think after driving it, I'm just going to hire a transport. Okay. Okay. And haul it back. Now I have someone who is bringing a car from Texas, and uh, in like a week and a half, and he got one for four hundred and fifty dollars. Really? I told him it's probably going to be between eight to twelve hundred. He found one for six, and I'm like, that's kind of cheap. Then he told me last night he found one for four hundred and fifty. So. Wow. I'll try to get that person's information for you okay. uh, so that you can consider using them, but okay. that's cheap. You know, some of, when they're in like in transit, I guess already coming this way and they have a big trailer with a bunch of cars, they can give a better deal because they're yeah. already in route anyways. And right, so they're just right. stopping to pick up another car, but right. it all depends on their, I guess their schedule, but yes, sir. Um, definitely though, I'll, I'll keep in touch with you and send you pictures as soon as we are at that point. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You'll be good. Do you want a factory height? Because right here, it's a little high. Do you want like the lowest normal factory height on here? Yes, I do. I want a, want a factory height. I, yeah. 
I'd like for it to look as close to normal as I can. Yeah. As close to factory as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Cause usually, like the lowest is this is this raised right now, or is this just the set the lowest setting? Cause it seems a little Sorry, high in the I back. I don't know. Okay, this seems a little high in the back. The way it looks right here is how it uh, normally is, like all the way around. I expect it to be like kind of like that, just about two fingers, maybe three. Let's see. Last week, it collapsed on me. Gotcha, gotcha. And I, I thought, man, this, uh, you know. It, it's yeah. Gonna... Yeah. It's too nice of a car to have to it worry about that, man. Yeah. Every time but, you drive this car, you don't have to worry about that. You don't want to. But I crank it up to, to load the thing and it Shot right up. up. Yeah. So. I I had a silver one that was doing that, and uh, I would start the car up. I would hit all the you know hit the settings to raise it full height, and then it would go up. But just one day on the highway, it just started. It decided to just sink. And then it started to go up crazy real high, and I was riding around like a like a dump truck. It was like doing weird stuff. I said, let me get rid of that suspension. I held on to it as long as I could, and then I said, forget about it. And I've been trans I've been converting them ever since. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to have to worry about it. Yeah. yeah. You know, if me and my wife want to go to Dallas or Houston or something, yeah. you know, I don't want to have to worry about it. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. So once you do this conversion, you can take it anywhere without ever having to worry about failure. So. Uh, that is Right. That's the point, you know. That's one less worry. Yeah. And your top works. It does. It works like a joint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The only thing you have to worry about then is just the top. Get the top working. You're good to go. Yeah. And the car, to me, looks even more beautiful with the top. Uh, it looks yeah. great down. Yeah. But I think it's a beautiful car as a hard oh, top. It is like an <laughs> yes, it is. It is, yeah. So yeah, great choice here. So I get you together. I'll stay in touch with you. And just let me know you get back home safe. You know what I mean? Just okay. so that I know. I just okay. peace of mind. I have your car yes. here. I like to know that you're yeah. safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. All right. Well, if you need anything else from me, let me know. Any questions or concerns? I'm just a phone call or a text message away. Okay. Well, when you get done, you holler at me and yeah, I'll send you the money. But okay, by whatever means you want. Yeah. Sounds good. Right. Sounds good. I appreciate you. Well. I'm going to end it like this and for the time being. Okay. All right. I will right. stay in touch with you, man, and you please get back safe. Okay. Yeah, All excellent. Right. Car is in the garage. Got to let it thaw out here before I start. <laughs> Goodness, it's so cold out here. My speech is slurred. I can't even feel my fingers. <laughs> so back to Texas. All right, man. Appreciate you again. It's cold, man. Yes, sir. Hey, what is the best way? Okay, so now I'm jumping into this video already with the ABC pump removed on this 2008 SL55. So just a heads up, but this 2008 SL55, we still have the M113K supercharged compressor motor, the V8 5.4 liter or 5.5 liter, whatever you wanna define it as, because specifically, I think it really is a 5.4. They advertise it as 5.5. You all can do the research on that, whatever. That's irrelevant. The point I'm trying to make is this. <clears throat> this is a very nice motor, the best motor Mercedes ever used, in my humble opinion. The compressor M113K motor is the most reliable, has the most potential power-wise, uh, I think that any, any, and it's more reliable. It's, it's more, it has been utilized more than any other motor and has been in production and maintained and lasted longer, uh, I think, than any motor, any V8 motor that Mercedes has ever used. It's proven itself time and time again. I think they introduced this motor in 2000 up until, let me see. Uh, I would I would say through 06, but this is a 08 with the same motor because they carried over the uh, uh, this motor into the 08, the SL55. Uh, they also offer 07 and up the 550 motor, and uh, let me see. Also the uh, 600, the V12 still they carried that over. The 6.3. Uh, was their AMG motor 
a, a Nash, I think that was a nationally aspirated 6.3 V8 uh, motor. But this 5. I'm going to just say 5.5. This 5.5 M113K is an incredible, incredible uh, motor. So this right here regarding the ABC pump, it was difficult to get because with the supercharged motor comes a whole lot of extra stuff. Now, they did do some upgrades to this motor for the 07 and up 5.5, uh, five, but it is still the same platform. So with the supercharger, you do get a lot of extra stuff that's in the way in order to um, have a supercharged. You have an extra belt. You have some extra pulleys, of course, the supercharger. Um, and you have some, some extra cooling um, components and uh, also some extra, I think, gas recycling, uh, fumes, recycles it, whatever, uh, for efficiency. Uh, you have a lot of different things. Uh, air, air intakes uh, are different. Um, but also the in the 07 and up, they have the updated ABC system. If you look at the top of these struts, there are no connections. The pump is different. Let's look at the components right here. Hold on. Let me get a little light. Add some light to the situation. This is different. This is not the typical valve block. This is the newer upgraded style. This, it is more reliable. Now, of course, I'm doing a coilover swap on this one because he's, his uh, ABC light came on. And it might be related to the, damp, uh, to the, to the dampeners. Um, but he still, or the accumulators. But he still wanted to go ahead and get the, get the system swapped out. Because he doesn't want problems down the road. It is still susceptible to failure. It is the newer ABC. But it is still susceptible to failure. These are the newer struts. They still have the regular connectors right there. Still have the sensors right there, the height sensors. You don't have the pulsation dampener right here. That's not there. So no reason to remove that other than to remove the lines that still run up along the driver's side of the engine compartment. It runs up underneath to the rear uh, valve blocks. So that's still in place. So I'll still try to remove those lines, but, and of course the rear valve block, but uh, things are a little different with this ABC system. It is more reliable. It is more reliable, but it is still a high pressure hydraulic fluid suspension that will fail. And so that's why this customer is going with the Neo Max coilover conversion, because it is only a matter of time before that happens. But I did want to give a little um, update on where I am with this car right now. And uh, I just really wanted to emphasize the um, high quality of this motor, how much I love this motor. I love it. I would take an SL55 over any other uh, SL that's on the market, the 550, the 6.3, uh, the 6.5. I mean, we're talking about a V12, but we're talking about issues regarding that v12 we're talking about reliability it has a twin turbo v12 it is a, an incredible motor an incredible car it's more rare than any other sl i guess um model uh, that they sold in the u.s but with that comes more maintenance uh, more expenses uh, it is a incredible car the sl65 but for me i would take a 5.5 over anything else as you see right there of course the wide body CL55, an incredible, incredible motor, incredible motor. So I'm happy to be doing this coilover swap. Not only will this customer have the power, but he'll also have the reliability of a adjustable coilover suspension. So that's one less worry for him. The only thing he, he now probably has to give attention to is the top, just to make sure the top continues to work. Worst case scenario, if the top stops working he still has a hard top he has a coupe you know these cars are incredible to me the supercars look up the definition of a supercar and i feel like the sl55 amg is a supercar it really is with unlimited potential everything that i did to this s uh, to the cl55 can be done to this 
I mean, these things are highly modifiable. You can definitely bring a lot of power out of here. It's already almost at 500 horsepower. You can get them up to about 700 horsepower with proper upgrades to the cooling system, to the supercharger, to the exhaust, uh, to the intake. There's a lot of things you can do to this car to bring out some serious power. Now, this customer, again, he brought this car in from Texas. Yes, from Texas to Cincinnati, Ohio. That's how, <laughs> that's how bad he wanted these coilovers installed. And he wanted them installed by someone who knows what they're doing. And not to toot my own horn, but I've done many, many, and many of these vehicles. And so, yes, I'm very familiar with what's expected, how to do it, how to adjust it, how to properly install it. So, let me get back to work. Oh, yeah, here goes the pump. Yeah, it's a little bit different than the standard ABC pump, isn't it? So there's nothing wrong with this pump. This pump is a good pump. So uh, there is a difference. I have a lot of pumps. I have a lot of pumps, a lot of parts. Um, let me go ahead and get to work and uh, give this customer what he's expecting and that's high quality work. So let me put the camera down and get to focusing. Oh, what I do wanna show you though is that I am reusing this reservoir. This is the original power steering reservoir. The ABC reservoir has been removed. There's no need to put to keep that in place if you're not using it. The SL does have two separate reservoirs for your suspension and for your power steering. So at this point, I'm now going to install a standard power steering pump, and then I'll move on to the rest of the components, the removal, and then uh, ultimately the installation of the Neomax. All right, guys, and here's the pump that you need. <laughs> Watch my favorite show, The Wind. So here goes the pump that you need to replace the ABC pump. Now, if you go to my website and buy this pump, it is $179.99 on my website. What makes this pump special is that it comes with the needed bracket in order to install it on the engine block. Again, go to my website, www.goelmaautoworks, to buy this pump. Here goes the bracket. This triangle-shaped bracket right here is what you need. It has to have that in order to properly adhere or be um, installed for it to line up properly. Otherwise, you bought the wrong pump. It has to have that bracket. So this is a standard Mercedes style pump, but not all the models come with that bracket. So you have to be careful when you're out there searching and you're buying a used pump or a pump for a model for a Mercedes just because you think it fits on your car. A S class, an ML, an E class, any of those components or any of those models, you have to make sure it has this bracket. And there was only a specific few. The ML55 AMG ML uh, came with this bracket. So go to my website. You don't have to do all your research. Just go to the website and order it and you'll be just fine. Guaranteed to fit. This will fit on the 550 motor. This will fit on the 500, the 55. The 6.3, is, this is not their proper power steering pump. You need the other one that's on my web, uh, website. It's the seven uh, ribbed one. You need a bracket though for that one. The one that I sell does not come with that bracket, but it is the proper pump. So you have to source the proper bracket to go onto that pump. Okay, a tip on installing the reservoir onto the new pump on this particular car, on this SL55, the 08, I had to reuse not the original hose, not the original power steering hose, which was too short, obviously too short. I had to use the original ABC uh, hose, this one right here. So I just connected it at the bottom of the reservoir. It connected it to the actual pump. And it's just long enough, you have plenty of length uh, to use it 
it will reach no problem. Uh, on this motor, on this 08 model, SL55, the pump is lower, um, further away from the reservoir. So just keep that in mind. That on this one, the pump is a little bit lower. And if it's not lower, it's just, I don't know, whatever. The design is further away from this one right here, from the reservoir. So I had to use the longer uh, hose, the ABC hose. Keep that in mind. Oh yeah, also, make sure you rinse that hose out with power steering fluid. Um, because that ABC fluid is obviously dirty. Well, you didn't know it, but when I drained it, um, it was really dark. So you don't want to introduce that into a new pump. So just rinse it out with some new fluid, that hose, and uh, go ahead and uh, install it. And then uh, before I put the belt on, I typically do spin the pulley on a new pump. I loosen the cap on this. I haven't tightened this down, but I use the original bracket here, you see. I just haven't tightened it down yet. And the original fluid is still in there, probably more than half of it is still in there. So I'll top it off. And I typically use either the full synthetic Prestone power steering fluid, it's European blend, um, or I will use this right here. All right, so you're good either way. Top it off, spin the uh, pulley so that it doesn't start off dry. There's already fluid in the pump. There's a little bit of oil already in there, but just make sure that when you start it, let it get the air out of the system, leave the cap loose or off, make sure the level is right, and go ahead and start her up, you know? But of course I have to put the belt on first. So before I put the belt on, I do freehand spin it, and then I put the belt. With the AMG, obviously there's two serpentine belts. You have this one for the supercharger, and then you have this one. And you uh, use the tensioner pulley down there to, uh, and I use this right here, this cheater bar, 17 millimeter, pull it back, put the belt in place, and you're good to go. So while doing the removal of these lines and disconnecting the strut down here, you have to get up underneath the car. You have to remove that line that runs across the front from this strut to this valve block and whatnot. But while doing that, uh, I'm about to put this wheel back on and then start working on the uh, valve block in the rear driver's side. But I happen to see this, which is uneven wear on this tire. So evidently there's an alignment issue that existed before the coilover conversion, uneven tire wear. So typically that's the camber. The camber is too, uh, the camber is going in, it's tilting in, in the top and it needs to be probably uh, brought out some. So that's a issue that he can resolve. You can do alignment before or after the coilover conversion. It doesn't matter. So I'll make the customer aware that he has uh, uneven tire wear. This is honestly dangerous because you can see the metal so at any given times, it will start to leak out. And worst case scenario is a blowout. You don't want that. And there's decent tread on here. I mean, I would recommend new tires anyways. But definitely take care of that alignment at some point. Guys, so on the SL, a lot of people are wondering, how do you get the strut out of the lower control arm this is on the front it doesn't matter passenger side or driver's side it's really not as hard if you typically buy like a fork or a pick style um, separator if you try to use it the traditional way it's not effective not for these abc struts why well because you just don't get enough bite um, and enough thickness of the fork itself in order to separate it so you need to go in at an angle. You don't put the whole fork over. Let me see if I can show you. You see it right there. Let me see. Okay, you see it right there, right? You do not put the whole fork over both sides. Instead, you go in at an angle. Let me see if I can put this flashlight here so that you can see what I'm about to do. Oh, this is hard than I thought. Hold on. Very limited light, it's hard to do. Let me see if I can do this, hold on. Okay, so the proper way to do this is you take this fork 
and you go in on the rear side, not on the front side, but on the rear side. Now this has a slight angle to it too. So do it so that it angles out towards the rear, not towards the front. A little taper look has a slight angle to it. You stick it in right there. Right there, between the outermost part of the strut and the lower control arm. And with a hammer, with a nice weighted hammer, you hit it. You're gonna hit it right here. Now I can't obviously do that and hold this camera device at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the phone down and just listen. Okay, now already I've wedged it in there enough where it's stable, it's sturdy, it's wedged in between, and I'm gonna give it a couple more wax, all right? Okay, you see where it's at? I'm not hitting it hard, I'm just getting it in there so that I can whack it. Okay, it usually takes two hands, two good hand or two hands to, to hit it accurately and with force, direct force. So let me put this phone down. All right, there it goes. All right, so it took a couple hits. Of course, you heard it, but it separates it. I'm not out of breath, my hand does not hurt. It takes some direct hits to get it to pop out. So do not try to put the forks, do not try to go like this, to do it from an angle. Just hit the outer edge of it and separate it from the lower control arm. Now, I've done a lot of these coilovers, and oftentimes people will have um, R knot, a replacement strut in the front. Now, when you have R knot, that method alone does not work. You have to wedge it and create more of a filler uh, because there's more space between the lower strut and the lower control arm. So, this thickness alone is not enough. So, I have to use this other little wedge that I have. That's about almost as thick as this, and it's also tapered. And I stick it in there from the bottom. I lower the car so that it sits on the bottom and creates a, a slight uh, wedge. And then I finish the wedge off with this one from the top. So that's only with R knot replacement struts. But with the OEM ABC strut, this is for me the best method. I've recently read a forum where someone said, loosen the nut and then uh, drive around for a couple of minutes and you'll hear it pop out. That can be dangerous. Make sure you leave enough thread that it doesn't uh, dislodge itself. But uh, just loosening the thread, I guess, would be enough. Uh, just loosening that bolt enough where it's no longer um, uh, compressed in there so that with the weight of the car and the steering geometry, I guess, it will cause it to, to pop loose and then you can easily pull it out. So that's another method that probably works. Just be careful not to loosen that nut too much. But this right here works for me. I do it consistently every time. So figure out what works best for you. That's just the method that I use. All right, guys. So I've said in earlier videos that the SL55 has a larger exhaust system. The piping is long, is, has a bigger diameter. Um, it's, it's bigger. And typically in the rear, 
when I do the coil over, when I do the uh, coil over swap, you have to remove the inner bolt of the lower control arm back there. That bolt is hard to clear uh, this exhaust piping right here. Now, the issue with the SL55 in comparison to the standard 500 or 550, like I said, is the overall diameter. It's a bigger pipe, and so I usually have to lift this pipe in order to clear that bolt. But on the SL55, you have to lower that pipe. The rear exhaust has to be lowered in order to get that bolt out. I use extensions and it's a star bit. So I use a star bit. And in my case, I use the smaller, um, is that one eighth um, extension, the thinnest extension that I can use and the smallest bit that I can use in order to clear and use the power. Uh, what is this? This is a impact um, drill. So I do it this way. Now, in order to lower the rear exhaust, you have to remove this right here. You have to remove that, which um, connects to the actual muffler. Um, the hook on the muffler, uh, you have to remove this in order to drop it. That support has to be removed. And also I removed this support right here. Sometimes I don't have to remove this one, but in this case I had to. I don't know if it's because it's even a larger diameter because it's a newer 08, because this car is upgraded from the 0, what, 02 or 03 through um, 06 SL55. This is the 08 SL55. So there's even more upgrades on this one. Uh, might even be performance wise, I don't know, but the exhaust definitely has to be dropped instead of lifted. Uh, like I said, the 500 and the 550, you can lift the exhaust enough to make clearance, but on this one, you have to drop it. And so I use this right here in order to keep pressure on the rear muffler. I wedge it between the tips, and I do this without doing any damage, of course. But you have to do that. You have to keep the exhaust pushed down in order to clear. Now, if you have somebody helping you, then cool. But because this is a one-man show, I have to use the wood to keep the uh, uh, pressure, I guess, or the, uh, the clearance to allow me to be able to clear that bolt to pull it out all the way. Now, some people will insert the bolt backwards so that you no longer have to ever do this again in order to remove the lower control arm. But really, there's no other reason that you have to remove the lower control arm once this is done. It's not like these struts are gonna go out anytime soon. Uh, these coilovers last a very long time, and so uh, it has an eight-year extended warranty, ex an eight-year warranty, so you're not going to have to worry about swapping these out anytime soon. So that is the process of removing that bolt. This is the way that I do it. In order to keep that tension on the rear exhaust, I put that wood in place right there, push it down as far as I can, and then wedge the wood in there, almost like cribbing is what they call that. And... Um, that allows me the clearance that I need in order to get that boat out. So just a little tip on the SL55 only, maybe on the uh, SL65, because it has the uh, all the upgraded performance exhaust as well. So, But on the 500 550, you do not have to do this. And I'm assuming that the 350 as well, but 350 already comes with coilovers, so you don't have to worry about that. So if you're replacing the ABC with adjustable coilovers on a 5.5, this is the tip on how to get that boat cleared out. Again, on the other models, all you have to do is lift it up. And I do that with jack stands. Just lift it up high enough to clear. But in this case, drop it down. All right. The SL55 is done, or it's at the point where it's ready for the ABC to be coded out of the module. So it's dark outside now. I've had to make some adjustments uh, to the rear and uh, to the front and uh, I think I'm ready to get the ABC coded out. So I'm about to take it over to the shop and have uh, the Mercedes mechanic do what he needs to do with the star system. Remember, 07 through 11, you cannot pull the fuse. You cannot simply pull the fuse to get rid of the ABC light, the red ABC light. You have to get it coded out of the modules. It's just the newer software. It's what it is with the 07 to 2011. So. 
that's what I'm about to do now. So the uh, suspension aspect of it is done. The Silver's Neomax coilovers have been installed and uh, we are ready to go. So I'll take some more uh, videos and pictures of it here at the gas station uh, with some lighting because it's nighttime, obviously. And uh, let's see what it is, okay? Here we go, baby. So now I'm en route to take the vehicle to where it needs to go so that it can go ahead and get the needed um, coating or get it ABC coated out. As you can see on the dash, of course, on the instrument cluster, you have the ABC that cannot be removed. The ABC warning, the red light, the notorious red ABC light that everyone hates. So I'm en route now to drop the car off so that I can go ahead and get that taken care of. Uh, I wish he did it for free, uh, but he charged me $300. And so, of course, I have to pass that cost on to the customer because on my usual coilover installations, I'm able to just pull the fuse, which is free. But if I have to pay somebody $300 in order to get this coated out, I got to charge a little bit more. And there is work on my part going to uh, drive all the way up to this place and drop it off and then have to go pick it up when it's done. But I mean, you know, I don't know. It is what it is. But for the time being, I'm just happy that the customer is able to get that taken care of, get that removed off the system and cluster so that he can uh, see uh, clearly what his car is doing and what it needs. And of course, all the information that the car, uh, that you need to see uh, about your car. So ABC, the red light is horrible. The intent of doing a coilover swap is to get rid of all remnants of ABC, all reminders uh, that you have a failing or prone to failure ABC system. And so uh, this is just part of the part of the uh, process is getting this removed. And so while I'm at it, let's talk about how this car is handling. Yes, the coilover swap is complete. Uh, the car is a, like I said, 2008 SL55, so it's an AMG, so it's a lot of power. And honestly, I think that this 08 SL55 is more responsive than my 2003 SL55. I think earlier in the video I said it was 04. I believe it's 03, the one that I own. Um, but I feel like that this car is more responsive. Now, there's some other factors that could be contributing to that, such as mileage. I don't even know how many miles is on here because I can't see. I can't remember what he told me. Um, when I first start the car before the red ABC light comes on, you can see the mileage. I just forgot. Uh, but I think it also has something to do with it being a newer SL55, the 08, 07 through whenever they stop making the 5.5. Five. I, I just know for a fact that there are some differences in uh, equipment, differences in modules, differences in the motor. Um, I think there are some, some, some added features to the motor that makes it different than the original 5.5 uh, uh, five that they used in the early 03 models. But either way, these cars handle fantastic. They are absolute beast. Uh, they are very over-engineered in a good way. Oftentimes, people refer to cars being over-engineered uh, in a negative sense that it's complicated and unnecessarily designed and not practical for everyday use. Uh, I think just the opposite with this SL55. It was properly designed, engineered beyond uh, what's expected, especially of the year uh, of these cars early 08s i mean i'm sorry the early 2000s i mean no other car would, would, were being built like these mercedes from the chassis to the suspension components to the electronics the motor transmission i mean these cars are incredible you know what and i think the difference of what i'm feeling is the seven speed transmission i'm free i forgot that 07 and up Shoot, oh, you know, maybe late 06, but they introduced in the 550 
and introduce the seven speed transmission. So I think that's the big difference in what I'm feeling um, on initial takeoff and the way that it shifts, the smoothness of the, uh, did they call it a seven tronic? I can't remember, but whatever that transmission is, it is different than the five speed. The five speed is more brutal. Um, you feel it uh, going through the gears a little bit more. The seven speed is a lot smoother. <clears throat> I don't know which is better. I just know it feels real good. The seven speed feels real good. I know that the five speed is, is very reliable. The seven speed has had issues in other models, I know. <clears throat> I can't speak for the SLs, but I know that the five speed is, you know, <coughs> excuse me, is super reliable. Uh, but there is, uh, they call it lag, I guess, in the acceleration, the initial takeoff of the five speed. Uh, I think the seven speed kind of, you know, fixes that problem. I think that's what I'm feeling. Now, of course, this video is supposed to be, you know, concentrating on the uh, coilover conversion. But to be honest, guys, I mean, I've driven so many of these cars with the coilover convergence, man. It, it, it just feels like a normal car when it comes to suspension. Um, it doesn't feel like you're taking away or, you, or you've lost anything. Of course, you lose the ability to stay flat on hard turns or whatever. Um, you, you lose the ability to raise up and down. You, you, you lose the ability to naturally sit lower once you go over a certain speed. I mean, whatever. Now you feel like you actually own the car and can drive the car and are in control of the car versus the car controlling you. It all depends on what you want. If you want a sports feel, a sport-like feel, then definitely coilovers is the way to go. Um, ABC is practical for what its purpose is, what it was designed for. Uh, but for those who like to feel and drive their car and be in control of their car and feel the road through the steering wheel and feel your car's limitations and have um, awareness of how your car is handling and performing at all times, coilovers definitely is the way to go. Now, if you want to add some sway bars, fine, but are they absolutely necessary? No. Um, sway bar server purpose. These cars handle fantastic without sway bars. I don't care what the naysayers say. It's fact. Uh, if you don't own one, then you can't speak on it. I don't care what your years of ASC certification or working at a, a car shop or whatever has told you, or even if you are a race car driver, then you really understand the purpose of sway bars. Yes, uh, these cars are not on track. Uh, a lot of these designs, uh, aftermarket modifications, they tell you straight up, um, if it's track only or if it's for the road, there's a substantial difference, an obvious difference of racing a car on a track, a controlled environment at high races speed uh, and, and extreme maneuverability uh, capability versus on the road. Of course, things can happen. You have to make last minute decisions, but your car is not lifting up off the ground. This car is so heavy and so low to the ground. Uh, your wheels are not lifting up on one side off of the ground. Uh, leading uh, to a car accident where sway bars would make a difference. Uh, if you were driving this car, uh, if you were tracking this car, if you were racing this car on the streets, then you would notice the difference of no sway bars. Uh, but never at all do I ever feel unsafe driving these cars without sway bars. Never do I feel uh, like I'm losing control or losing uh, uh, traction or losing um, uh, uh, safety while driving this car without sway bars. So it is what it is, man. I'm tired of talking about it. But it has to be addressed because it is a common question about sway bars because you do have a company or two out there that's saying, don't install coilers without sway bars. Well, of course, they want you to buy their more expensive kit. They want you to install the sway bars. And as if you have no option other than to spend that much money to have a coilover conversion. Well. That's like saying there's no better way to eat than at an expensive restaurant. But we also know that most people go to fast food and middle of the road restaurants. They don't go to the most expensive in order to be satisfied. And oftentimes people are just looking to be able to be able to drive their cars on a regular basis, on a daily basis, uh, safely, comfortably. They want to be satisfied. They don't have to always go above and beyond to feel that they made the right decision and uh as if that's the only option that you have that's unrealistic very unrealistic 
these cars are very reliable and very safe without sway bars. So you do what's best for you, um, you know, so that you have a peace of mind. But what I am more of an advocate for is removing ABC. That is the greatest peace of mind, is being able to drive your car without this warning light popping up on you randomly when you hit bumps or randomly when you're out of town when you bust the line and now you have hydraulic fluid all over the place and now you can't even get to your destination because you have to call a tow truck. That sucks. That sucks. So, this customer will be extremely happy, um, especially when I get this ABC warning light removed. But just the way the car handles and feels, he'll he'll definitely be excited. Definitely be excited. He'll definitely be satisfied. This car handles fantastic. Now, of course, with it raining out here tonight, I'm not driving crazy. I'm just taking my time. Also, because his front passenger tire has uneven wear and uh, it's worn out on the inside. So I have to let him know that. Um, but he needs to get that addressed. Um, I don't suggest that he drive this uh, excessively until he gets that replaced. I would, that's something I would do immediately. Immediately, I would get that tire swapped out. Uh, it, it possibly get alignment if that's the issue. Uh, but he has uneven wear, and that was on the ABC suspension, uneven wear. So I'll let him know that. All right. But I'm going to go ahead and stop recording just because I need to you know, make sure I'm paying attention with this, the road conditions the way they are with the, with the rain. Uh, I did not know it was going to rain tonight, uh, but you know, Cincinnati weather, you never know what's going to happen. All right, guys, I'll make some more footage here, uh, probably uh, tomorrow once it dries, uh, once the ABC light is gone, and I'll let you know. All right, I'll pause for now. All right, I have the car back. It's the next day. Wifey up there is, uh, she just dropped me off to pick the car up. The ABC light is clear. It's been coded out of the module. Oh man, what a nice car this is. Man, it's so nice. I'm like, I wish I had one of these. I forgot I do have an SL55. <laughs> but this 08 one just feels a little different. I just noticed that it has the panoramic roof. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I tell you what, if you're gonna get an SL55 and if you could afford it, man, this 08 feels really good. I know it's the transmission. And there's a couple, like I said, other things that are updated. Mercedes does update their cars. They'll introduce a model and then after a couple years, they'll give a an, an updated, um, an update to the model. They'll add some more features. They just kind of hold back. I think they, and it's almost like they like start adding things right before they do another body style change they'll like introduce new 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 features i guess and new style to the vehicle right before they do a dramatic change they'll bring they'll carry some of those new changes over to the new model i've seen that you know over the years they'll change like uh the front end a little bit but keep the rear end like they did the same thing on the sl you know they did the same thing on like the e-class they do that a lot now, I did just notice on takeoff, um, on acceleration, with the seven speed, it's shorter uh, gearing in between. I know with the five, it kind of drags a little bit before it hits that next gear. This was like kind of a short shifter um, sequence I just experienced. The seven speed is a nice transmission. I mean, they use it on all their vehicles from late 06 or maybe 07 to, uh, I know uh, maybe 14 or 13 maybe. I don't know, they might still use it. I, I don't know, I, the transmission probably surely has changed from 14 and up, I just don't know what it is. But um, what I do know is that this transmission feels real good in the SL. Such a small car, it's just different. This feels different than like in the S-Class. Like I've experienced the same transmission like the CL550. The S550 that I had, of course, the GL550s that we own. This transmission feels really good in this SL. Let me turn the heat on, man. It's cold in the month. So, uh, weather wise in Cincinnati, you see here it's 38 degrees and raining. Oh, look at the mileage, guys 59,000. And I just realized on my SL55 that I have 79,000. I forgot how many miles was on that joint. 
I just looked at it yesterday. But I'm keeping this video rolling because I want to, you know, see how this feels on the road. And once I get on this, uh, this is Bypass 4. It's a long strip of highway-like road conditions. So I want to see how this feels. You see, I, I already broke traction a little bit when I took out, took off out of the uh, parking lot. It's easy to break traction, especially with it being wet the way it is. Easy to break traction. Man, this is a nice car. Here we go. Drive straight and smooth. Again, I gotta keep in mind that front driver's tire has that uneven wear to it, so I gotta be careful. It's dipping. Yeah, this thing hugs the road nice. God, I love Silver's Neo Max coilovers. Man, if y'all don't stop playing and stop being stuck on this OEM conversation that people are having about keeping ABC and keeping it original, if you ought to open up your mind and start realizing that these cars are phenomenal, can be driven with or without ABC, goodness. Why did you buy your car? Did you buy your car just to say that it's original? Did you buy your car just to say one day the value is going to go up on it if I keep it original? Who, who tells themselves that? You, need, you guys need to start living in reality. The cars that have gone up in value are old. Don't you understand that all cars have to depreciate before they start to appreciate? And most cars will never appreciate. They'll wind up in a junkyard. And there are only a, a few Mercedes that will actually appreciate. They'll never go back to where they were. Well, we won't be alive to see the cars that are worthy of appreciation to go back to where they were. For instance, we get fed. We understand that old Corvettes, certain Mustangs, certain Mercedes, like the early SL, Gold Wings. Yeah, these cars are what year? In the 50s? Maybe even 40s? I don't know, 50s? 60s? And they've gone up in value? Look how long it took. Do you really expect your car to go up in that kind of value while you're able to actually enjoy the benefits of ownership? Or do you plan on just passing it down to your children? And keep in mind, not every car is worth going up in value. There's only a few SL models that will go up in value. And it's not the regular SL 500s. They're not, there's too many of them out there. This is not the Goldwing days. Those were the introductory roasters that Mercedes built that actually were built for the track. That's hard to find. At some point, if everybody thinks that we're gonna be in flying cars, and so a Mercedes SL at 2003 is gonna be worth the prices of a gold wing, well maybe that's just not reality. Maybe that's just your imagination. The only SLs that are going to skyrocket in value would be the SL65. The SL600 will likely go up in value only because it's a V12. And the 5.5 AMGs, but how long is it going to take for them to really go crazy? Because remember that these cars were $120,000 to $160,000. When is it going to go back up to that value ever again? There, there has to be like only a few left in the world for them to go up to that value. They didn't make a lot of SL65s, I understand that. And SL600s are not as as, as as plentiful as the 500s, of course, and the 55s. But the 55s, um, I, I think over time, Mercedes has realized, and everyone else has realized, well, a lot of people have realized that the 55s um, are one of the best motors that Mercedes built when it comes to reliability and power potential. But still, how many 5.5s exist? So keeping those numbers in mind, what makes these cars stand out amongst all other cars? What makes them collectibles? The world hasn't realized or come to appreciation of what they truly are yet. So it's gonna take a long time for that to happen because there's too many cars that come out 
too quick. Mercedes is pushing cars out too quick. There's too many cars out here. And only the rarest of the rare will go up in value. Now you have the SECs. Those are the 80s. Those have gone back up in value. I think original purchase price for those was still, I don't know, 50, 60,000. I don't know. That's a lot of money back then. Maybe 40,000 to six, maybe 60,000. I got to look that up. Um, what was the original purchase price of these SECs? I got to look that up. I've had some some nice SECs, but the light blue one that I had was the best one, the 83, 380 SEC. Best condition, no rust, everything worked. It was a very nice car. And I sold that for good money. Got it for cheap. I'll just say it. I, I bought it for $1,500 and I sold it for eleven five. It was a good good deal. But all these cars have gone up in value, the SECs, but they, they're nowhere near their starting points. You got to keep that in mind. They're nowhere near their starting points. So is it practical or realistic to think that by you preserving your original ABC that your car is going to be worth a mint? Don't think so. There's only 500s out here, bro. They, they, they ended up in a junkyard. They're, they're getting left at shops. If they ever skyrocket in value, we'll probably all be manured by then. We'll be dead. And then it doesn't even matter. You spent your whole life dealing and stressing with a problematic suspension instead of driving the car. I don't buy these cars just to be happy I own one. Come on, man. I'm 45 years old. I'm at the peak of my interest when it comes to vehicles and driving, the driving experience, what I expect of them. I'm not at a point of wasting money. I'm at a point of trying to save money and build. And so why would I buy a car that constantly financially bleeds me. Why would I do that? If you're bleeding, literally, what do you do? You stop the bleeding or you'll bleed out and you'll die. Same thing with uh, your finances. When it comes to, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking simplistic only about vehicles. Why would you buy a vehicle, an A to B vehicle, of course, with style that constantly bleeds you, causes you to bleed? Why would you do that? Eventually your finances will bleed out you'll be able, uh, you'll, you won't be able to afford the vehicle. You'll sell it and your complaint will be it was too expensive to maintain. And you've lost the purpose of ownership to actually enjoy the car, to be able to jump in this car and take it out of town, to take your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, however you swing, out on a nice date in a nice expensive vehicle that um, feels very good to drive and own and to be seen in. It adds elegance to the night, to the experience. But in the back of your mind, you're wondering, can you make it to your destination safely and back home safely? Because the suspension might go out. You might get that ding, red light. Now your whole night is screwed up. And it's about to get way more expensive than it was. And it makes you not even want to keep your car. You say, I, I. your girlfriend or your spouse, your, your better half will look at you and say, why do you even have this? My Honda, my Honda doesn't do that. <coughs> my Toyota Camry with leather and fake wood doesn't doesn't do this. Why do you even have this car? Well, it's it's active body control and it's a dynamic suspension that allows it to constantly stay flat on turns and it always adjusts and it's self adjusting, almost self drives. You don't even know that you're even on a suspension. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> the technology is wonderful the purpose of the suspension speaks for itself but the problems of the suspension also speaks for itself so in 2024 is it really bragging rights to brag on something that's that's draining you financially to maintain for those who can maintain it great for those who can own it and fix it themselves and get it done for cheap fine if yours haven't had any problems fine if ownership for you has been uh, uh has been easy fine but don't speak for everyone else who experiences the true flaws of this system on a regular basis. The reason why I get called so much about these cars is because they fail so much. Your reality is different from mine when it comes to experiencing 
failure on these ABC suspensions when it comes to experiencing other people's failures. Yes, I'm not in the car with people when it fails, but I hear about the failure. They call me when their suspension fails. I get notified every day from somebody who's dealing with an ABC suspension problem. And so that's why I speak so, so, um, uh, so, per so, I'm determined in my in my in my conversations. That's why I speak so heavily about heavily, heavily. Is that word not heavily? Yeah, heavily. I guess I speak so heavily, and I'm such an advocate, and I'm such a supporter, and I'm so assertive regarding these coilover suspensions because I am vexed. I am bothered by the pain of others. I truly have empathy for the pain of others. My business didn't develop out of greed. Silver's Neomax, they didn't contact me and say, let's get rich. Nah, I put videos out before I even sold coilovers. I put videos out supporting the brand before I was a business. I was helping people before I made a dime because it's just what I wanted to do and nothing has changed just because I have a business doesn't mean that I've changed my concern for others and their Mercedes and keeping it on the road it hasn't decreased but it has increased because I see the advantages of not keeping ABC versus being stressed out about ABC. And it's the same thing with Aromatic. Do you know how many cars are sold with failed Aromatic systems? Why these cars sell for so cheap because the Aromatic has gone out? Why people choose to not buy these cars because Aromatic and S and ABC is, has failed? Mercedes, go on Craigslist. Go on Facebook Marketplace. Look at all the cars that's available. All the Mercedes who are, who, who, who all the Mercedes models that are plagued by the ABC and the Aromatic failure. And look at how much they sell for. People don't want to buy them. Because people don't want to put the thousands of dollars into them. I've had people give these cars away. I know someone who gave away a SL600 because of the issues with the uh, suspension. Gave it away. Just gave it away. An SL, an 05, I think. SL600. Because the suspension had failed. How crazy is that? I hear stories all the time. I'm just like, golly, you serious? But that's what it is, man. That's what it is. The people who are well off who spend $30,000 on one of these cars, and then the people who buy them for $5,000. <laughs> it's crazy. You can buy a car for $5,000 and have ABC failure, or buy it for $30,000 and still have ABC failure. Because these cars are 20 plus years old. That's why. Thankfully, it's Mercedes and they're built very well. And the technology is off the chain. But it's 20 plus years old. So what do you do? Do you fix each component as it fails? You can do that. Do you just should buy the whole new system? Do you just buy every component and just revamp your system and, and, and make it fresh and new? You could do that. Or you can get rid of the ABC altogether and just keep driving your car. And now you only focus on the uh, convertible top not working one day. But that motor and transmission is going to last forever. It feels that way. Very seldom does the transmission and motor go out on these things. It's the suspension in the top. Same thing if you drive a CLS. CLS is aromatic. They always fail. You can keep that aromatic or you can switch it out. Mercedes S550. Keep it aromatic or switch it out. If you have ABC on your S550 or S500, S430, S65, S600, S6350, uh, you can choose to keep it aromatic or ABC or you can do a call over swap. It's up to you. Totally up to you. Totally up to you. You, you have options. They make coilovers for even the G-Wagon. They make coilovers for the GL, for the ML. Um, uh, I think 
adjustable coilovers because some of these Mercedes have coilovers like for the CLK those are coilovers but you can get adjustable coilovers if you want to lower the stance or whatever if you want to increase the height of these SUVs or lower the height you can do that too you can go to my website I have all those coilovers on there I've even considered doing it on my G G55 just because the AMG struts are so daggone firm the G-Wagon is so firm Goodness gracious, it's like it has like a racing suspension on a G Wagon. I need that mud to be a little bit more plush. I hit a, anything on the road, I pass gas. Ooh, so tight. It upsets my stomach sometimes. But yeah, anyways, this right here is a nice car. This SL55. I'm very happy with the coilover conversion. This car came from Texas, it's going back to Texas. Uh, I think it's getting picked up Tuesday. Uh, transport company. Uh, very nice car. He'll be very happy. Very happy. Very happy. Very nice car. But as you guys see, no more ABC. No more red light, not even a white light. Very nice car. All right, we have here two Mercedes SL55s. One is a 2003, one is a 2008. There are subtle differences between the two models. Yeah, there's some aftermarket stuff going on here on this 2003 SL55, including wheels, grill, exhaust uh, has been uh, modified, uh, rear spoiler, and uh, the tail light, uh, the brake uh, light uh, has been changed out. Now we have here the clear brake light we have here uh, everything else is pretty much uh oem you have the nice amg five star wheels concave beautiful everything else has been uh, pretty much kept the same tinted windows on both uh, i think this is the original grill uh, this one has the custom grill these are beautiful cars beautiful cars from the factory or modified now again, there are some subtle differences OEM. Uh, from the, uh, let's see, 07 through 08, they changed some things on the SL55. Things that are different from the 03 through 06. Such things are, well, noticeably, the mirrors are different. These are bulkier. These are slimmer, narrow. They have the updated LED. This has the old school LED. Also, the rear has power closing and opening trunk. Customary on a lot of the more modern Mercedes. This one did not come with that feature. You have to pull back on this and then lift it manually. I guess my trunk is locked. Also, the radio on this one is old school. You see that? Look at the radio on this one. Nice radio, nice updated radio. This has a panoramic roof. Now that was an option on the O3s. Mine just doesn't have it. The door seals are different. This is an aluminum, a gloss aluminum, almost looks chrome. This one in comparison is just this one. Okay. The matte satin finished aluminum. Let's see, is the steering wheel different? Is the cluster different? Let's see. All right. 
cluster looks the same, but this is leather. Mine was suede. The steering wheel might be different. Yeah, the steering wheel's different. Has this more sportier steering wheel. Again, mine's the Alcantara or the suede-like material right there. Without the front windows being tinted, that does fade. It loses its color a little bit. Mine still has the color, but I had a another 2004. Front windows were clear, and that actually was faded. What other differences? Mine has the silver uh, trim, center console, door paneling. This one has the wood. Now that's not anything special because they did offer that, of course, in the old threes. Uh, let's see, what else? This has the paddle shifters. Look at that, steering wheel paddle shifters. Oh yeah. Mine has the buttons. Now a lot of people will upgrade that to give that nice, more modern feel. All right, it's another difference. What else? Um, let's check the engine. How about that? Oh, I do know that the ABC is different. This has the more updated ABC. It's more reliable. The suspension on the 07, 08, up to 11, that ABC is updated, more reliable, but it still is prone to failure, but it's more reliable. This one has the problematic uh, late 02, I guess, or 02 through 06 ABC. Uh, they actually introduced ABC, I think, in 2000s, but not on this car. Like on the CL, they introduced it early on. There's a CL600 down there. That's mine. Uh, anyways, so what else? Uh, okay, let's look at the engine. This is the 5.5 compressor. This has the coilover swap, by the way. They both have been changed over to the Silver's Neomax coilovers. The adjustable dampening, I love it. I also do the uh, power steering pump swap. You see that down there? That's the standard power steering pump. That is not the ABC pump. That's been pulled out, as well as the reservoir. All right, let's take a look here at this engine. Let's see if they're the same. This too has been converted to Silver's Neo Max coilovers. So we don't have to worry about ABC failure ever again. Got a little oil seepage going on. Gotta take a look at that. See where that's coming from. But yeah, motor looks pretty, pretty much the same, right? This is just a little cleaner, but it is the hand built M113K compressor supercharged motor all right now I noticed when I was doing the coilover swap there's a couple little things that I didn't see in mind this right here recirculates the uh, the gas fumes burns it off mine doesn't have that it is the same motor though There goes mine right here. I know that right there recirculates the uh, the, un, uh, the the fumes from the gas tank. And instead of having it, well, this is it right here too. Nope. So that just serves the same purpose. It's just relocated, I guess. But everything else looks the same. There's some subtle changes. There are some subtle changes. But it appears that uh, Mercedes, they refined their engine a little bit more for the 08 model. There are some subtle changes, some things that I noticed when I was in there doing the coilover swap and pulling out the ABC pump. It was a little bit more difficult on this one. There's a couple things that were kind of in the way. Matter of fact, I did see. Hold on, is that the same? Is that located the same? The oil filter? I swear it was harder to get the ABC pump out of the 
Oh wait, harder than it was to get it out of this one. And I do these all the time, so if I noticed it, then it was there. Okay, that's okay, that's the same. But yeah, there were some subtle differences though. It was it was it was a little more difficult to get that out of there. But same motor. Now the modules are different. The 07 and up, you have to uh, program ABC out. You cannot just simply pull the fuse out to get rid of the red ABC light. This one actually has to be coded out with the star system. Because the SL350 does not come with ABC, it is an option on the star menu to get rid of ABC from the car. It will no longer look for it. It's called decoding, I guess, or programming it out. So there you go, guys. Very nice examples of SL55s. It's a lot of power sitting right here. 493 horsepower stock. These cars are easily upgradable when it comes to power, when it comes to horsepower and foot-pounds of torque. They can be tuned. The pulleys can be uh, uh, decreased in size. You can uh, uh, upgrade the cooling system. Uh, you can change the intake size. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, there's a lot of things you can do to it in order to, you can flash it, of course. You can do a stage two Euro charge tune. You can get a lot of power out of these things. They come with almost 500 horsepower stock. You can get it up to 700 plus for a couple thousand dollars, maybe three to $4,000. You can change the headers. You can do a lot of stuff. The exhaust system, there's a lot of mods you can do to this motor. This is the best motor. I'm not gonna say one of the best. I'm going to say the best motor that Mercedes ever made out of all their AMGs. It's not the most powerful stock, but it is the most reliable out of all of them. That's my humble opinion. Beautiful cars. This one right here came from Texas, the coilover swap. Uh, he had it uh, shipped in from Texas to Cincinnati, Ohio, and it is actually getting picked up today. It's ready to go. I'm gonna clean it up first though. We've had some bad weather here, a lot of rain. It's cold, it's really cold. We've had some snow, we have, uh, we've had it all. Cincinnati, Ohio, guys, in the wintertime, sucks. I need to move to Florida. <laughs> but yeah, this is my personal one. I love this car. I love all my cars. I have a bunch of Mercedes. Uh, but the SL, well, the 5.5 period is my favorite. Any any model. If it's a 5.5, it's for me. So which ones do you like better? <laughs> the newer SL55 or the older one? It doesn't really matter. As long as you have an SL55. But those are some of the subtle differences between the two. You choose what's best for you. Also, that front bumper obviously is different. That front bumper is more aggressive on the 08 in comparison to this one. But they are both good bumpers. Great designs. Great designs. You see the fog lights, that's different. It's, re it's really nice. I don't like that the original uh, grill on this one was like silver. It's cool. I like this one a little bit better. I like that. But of course, I changed that grill out. Yeah, guys. Beautiful cars, man. Beautiful cars. If you have the privilege of owning one, you should uh, really appreciate what you have. And if you don't have one, consider getting one or maybe even just driving it for the experience. If you have a 500, it's still a beautiful car. It's a fun car to drive. If you have a 600, it's even more fun to drive. If you have a 6.5, oh boy. If you got a 6.3, great. If you got an SL550, you're, you're happy. You know. So no matter what you have, all examples of this SL are wonderful. Even the 350, they're very, very well built cars mercedes doesn't make them like this anymore so if you own one you have a wonderful car do the maintenance on it if you decide to keep abc that's cool if you decide to convert over to coilovers you'll be trouble free regarding the suspension the convertible tops are problematic at times uh, but they're worth saving guys these sls you're starting to see them on the side of the roads more often not really on the side of the roads just a figure of speech but you're seeing them left at shops you're seeing them on the market for for sale for cheap you're seeing them being disassembled i mean guys let's save these cars man they're so worth it they're so worth it they're so worth it enjoy your sl guys let's keep them on the road visit www.go.autoworks.com if you want to see more content go to my youtube channel uh like share subscribe comment i'm always on there guys if you want to discuss it we'll talk about it if you're interested in a coilover swap let me know like i said this car came from texas i have another one up the street 
uh, in the driveway. Let's look at it. It's a red one. That's from Texas as well. I'll be working on that one next. So yeah, guys, cars come from all over the United States for me to do these coilover swaps because I have the experience. I know what to expect. I know how to do it. Even if you don't want me to do the coilover swap for you, go to my website, order the coilovers, the Silver's Neo Max coilovers. I have them there. I'll help you guys out with the process. I'll help your mechanic out with the process. If you have any questions, you can call me, talk to me, text me, whatever. I'll help you guys. All right. Haha, <laughs> thank you. Like yours, the, uh, the AMG. So the SL snuck up on me. My daughter says somebody's in the front yard, a red car in front of the uh, driveway. Who is that? I came outside and saw the SL already sitting there. And there goes the truck down there. So instead of coming up here and then backing out, there's a turnaround down there. So they decided to just keep it down there and remove the vehicle off of the truck and bring it this way. So we have here three Mercedes SLs. The red is the SL500. This is a SL55. This is a SL55. All right, guys. So the 2008 SL55 is done. It is complete. I do have another SL500 that came in from Texas. It needs the coilover swap done. But for now, this 2008 SL55 is done. The coilover swap on this SL55 went very well. It drives very well. It handles extremely well. No complaints. At this point, I'm just waiting for the transport company to show up to pick the car up. I've been blessed and privileged to drive this car. This car has been phenomenal. It handles very well. It really is a charm to be able to work on this car, do the upgrade on it, the coilover conversion, and to compare it to my SL55. These cars are so nice. I really love these cars. Mercedes, man, it's the only way to go for me personally. Let's take a look at her one more time before she gets uh, loaded up. Before the truck arrives and we load her up. This car doesn't have a scratch on it. And I'll make sure the owner knows that. Then when it left here, not one scratch. The paint on this thing looks like it just got painted. He has kept this thing in such great condition. This is such a beautiful car. This is a perfect example of an SL55. Look at that paint, guys. It's like glass. These are becoming really hard to find, these newer um, 07, 08s, SL55s. It's just, you know, it's just the best 55 that they built before they um, switched over to the 6.3. This is just a really, really, really nice car. Very nice, very nice. So yeah, I can't wait for the owner to get this car back and for him to drive it and then let me know what he, think, uh, what he thinks, what he, what he feels about the coilover con conversion versus the ABC. I already know what he'll say, but it's just good to hear it. And as you can see, no ABC warnings. Beautiful. Okay, so now I just have to wait for the transport company to show up and get her loaded up. All right, guys. So the uh, transport vehicle is here, the truck. And so now I'm about to drive down there to him and get this bad boy loaded up. 
so that the owner can get his beautiful SL55 back home safely. All the way to Texas. Let's go. It's raining. It was just snowy, now it's raining. It is an ugly day here in Cincinnati, Ohio, but it is a wonderful day for the owner of his SL55. He's about to get his vehicle back safely to Texas. Here we go, baby. to assume that he's backing that vehicle up so that we can get this vehicle on. I'm going to just position it and then let him go from here. Okay. Let him have this. Let me see. Looks like this thing can carry about one, two, three, maybe three vehicles safely. Four at the most. Let's see. Get the name of this company real quick, just in case there's any issues. Man, this is a long truck. Goodness. You need help? You okay? Oh, I can't understand nothing I'm saying anyway. Right. That's good, he's making sure that the front bumper clears, so that's good. That's good, that's good. 